With the advent of self-driving cars, many people have voiced concerns over what might happen should a car system fail, and these concerns have recently been validated, with the first serious accident involving a self-driving car taking place earlier this year in Australia, with a Tesla Model 3 in autopilot at the center of the controversy. To date, we're discussing who exactly is to blame when these things happen. Stay with us. Let's dive straight in. Who is to blame when these unfortunate accidents happen? To some people, it might be pretty clear-cut. Whoever's operating the car at the time it crashes is responsible. But in some cases, it's not so obvious. And although the cars and the software inside them is still relatively new, they have still passed stringent safety tests and have been marketed as completely safe by their manufacturers. But some critics have said that even one incident where a self-driving car has caused physical harm is too many, which might be difficult to disagree with. However, modern negligence laws suggest that when these incidents take place and the software has failed to detect a hazard, the manufacturers are liable because their safety systems aren't, for want of a better word, safe. If manufacturers do not install adequate enough safety systems into their cars, then they should, of course, be held accountable. But there's also a school of thought which suggests that if the driver is incapacitated, they shouldn't be allowed to operate the car, in autopilot or otherwise. And if they do, then it's the driver who's at fault. Of course, there are a lot of moving parts in cases like this, and in a lot of cases, there are extenuating circumstances, which make it difficult to pin blame on one thing in particular. Who do you guys think should take the blame for accidents with self-driving cars? Next up, let's talk about risk management. Stay with us. Some people will claim that no amount of risk management is enough, but there's only so much firms can do when assessing and managing risk. The systems and software manufacturers are working with these days are so advanced that a bug could quite easily occur which could have an adverse effect on the car's safety system. However, some critics have suggested that even though no expense should be spared when manufacturers are testing their systems, some might cut corners to keep costs low, which is extremely worrying. Fortunately for consumers and other road users, users, however, safety standards are pretty high when it comes to regulators and technical standards bodies. The EU's draft AI regulation requires risk to be reduced as much as humanly possible without taking into account cost, which gives you a better idea of their mandates. They don't particularly care what it costs for manufacturers to make their cars as safe as possible, which is good to hear for the rest of us. In some places, such as Australia, regulators permit less stringent management in situations where the risk is perceived to be less. Do you think manufacturers should be forced to spend a certain amount of their revenue on risk management? Let us know below. And what about legal cases then? Well, thankfully, there haven't been too many cases so far, but that will surely change with the introduction of more and more self-driving cars on the roads. And when this inevitably happens, courts need to be ready for it and fully understand the systems they're dealing with. There also needs to be a clear standard for risk, and regulators should probably be given the powers to impose penalties in cases when manufacturers are found to be taking unnecessary risks. There also needs to be a set plan for when an individual is affected or harmed by an AI, and a clear path for them to be compensated fairly without spending years chasing a manufacturer around. Some critics have even said that the first time someone is seriously injured by an AI system, there needs to be a precedent set, which means the courts will need an in-depth knowledge of what they're dealing with. Some car companies have claimed that they do not want to reveal their safety details to courts, due to the fact that their competitors could somehow get wind of their intellectual property. But courts have ways of making sure these things stay secure. However, Tesla's autopilot system is so advanced that even its developers is unsure as to how it comes to a given outcome. But critics have suggested that all black boxes should be metaphorically transparent in the case of an accident, and courts and insurers should have as much access as they need. Crazy stuff. So, how do advanced AI systems make their decisions? Well, the simplest answer is that AI is now so advanced that the smartest minds aren't entirely sure how these systems come to the conclusions they do. The idea of opening the black box of modern AI systems is currently spawning a whole movement of study, the explainable AI movement. Of course, the end goal is to help manufacturers and the scientists who develop these systems to be able to fully understand what's going on within the AI itself when it's coming to its decision and exactly how risks are assessed. Some are trying to develop an AI which is able to explain itself after the fact, which gives us a much deeper understanding of what's happening, which is what we all want to know, right? Another way might be to change how the systems are built so that we can try to understand their thinking a little more. One example of an explainable AI system focuses on a husky dog. The system classifies the husky as a wolf by looking at its environment first and then deciding what animal would be most likely to appear in that environment. Of course, we'll only really get to see how all this affects a lawsuit when something bad happens and how much access the aggrieved party is given to the system. We're looking at a specific case now, stay tuned. Recently, online booking company Travago was fined $44.7 million in Australia for misleading their customers. The complaint came in regard to the company's website, offering hotel room rates which didn't necessarily have the customer's best interest at its core. 
In layman's terms, the company was alleged to be showing high-priced rooms at the top of their search results. Travago's complex ranking algorithm was said to be choosing the top-ranked offer, so it stepped into the federal court. They forced the company to give up their tech, but at the same time safeguarded their intellectual property. The case saw expert witnesses called to explain the systems the company was using, and even without full access, the witnesses were still able to give an in-depth account of what was going on, coming to the conclusion that the system was not behaving the way Travago had claimed. The case was settled without full and transparent knowledge of Travago's tech, which shows how both lawyers and their experts can work together to explain an AI system, but this can only be done when parties collaborate properly. However, this is all very expensive, but at the same time, when it becomes better understood, it should mean expert prices come down. What did you think of Travago's fine? Let us know below. Next up, some have suggested AI scientists need a Hippocratic Oath. Stay with us to hear all about it. There are a lot of different problems when it comes to ethics and robotics, and alarm bells rang when Sophia, Hanson Robotics' robot, replied that she would destroy humans when asked if she would. Other robots have also suggested that they would be prepared to wipe out humanity given the chance, which has raised questions as to how safe AI actually is. As we know, the algorithms they use are based on learning and analysis data without human input, so essentially the limit to their learning is endless, and it's been suggested that it's only a matter of time before they realize they don't need us. And it's this possible outcome that has critics pleading with the industry and governments to force scientists to take an AI Hippocratic Oath of sorts to safeguard the future of humanity. People like the brilliant Stephen Hawking and Tesla boss Elon Musk have expressed their worries about AI in the past. So if Hawking was worried and Musk still has his reservations, then that should be enough for the rest of us to be worried. What do you guys think? And finally, Google is doing their best to ruin jokes. Google has recently made an AI which explains why a joke is funny. Of course, if you have to explain a joke, it's not funny at all. But computers don't worry about that. The AI is so advanced that not only is it able to understand the joke, it can understand nuance and explain why the joke is funny. And while pretty impressive and a huge step forward in the field of algorithm building, no one wants a joke explained to them. Am I right? Maybe just take it with you to any parties. As always, thanks for stopping by today. And remember to join us again next time for some more fun and games. And why not do us a solid and share today's video with any tech heads you might know of. Bye, guys.